In this video, I'll be walking you through how I created my latest Lego Porsche reel. I'll show you the whole process from start to finish, how I set up the scene up until the final render. Let's get it started. So the first thing I did was I grabbed the exact clip that I needed in order to match the shot in 3D, which was the last part of the clip, and I rendered it as a single separate file. Then I jumped into Blender and deleted all the default stuff that we have in here and set up my first scene. Pressing Shift A, I created a cube with the same dimensions as my actual deck in my office to get the scale of the scene right. Next, I added a circle and a camera. I moved the camera back on the Y axis, then I parented it to the circle. This is my go-to trick when I do camera animations and I use it in 90% of my videos. The cool thing about this is when I rotate the circle, it keeps the camera centered and that makes it so much easier when you're trying to create smooth animations. I imported my clip as a background plane in the camera settings, set it to movie clip and put it to front. That way I could match the real life footage. What's important here is that you're not moving the camera directly, but you're changing the circle's rotation just like so. That way it keeps the framing of the camera consistent and when you're moving it closer and further away, it keeps the circle still centered. Step three is to block out the animation. To get a rough idea for the timing, I added a yellow placeholder cube just like so to act as the first car piece. It's a pretty quick way to check if the animation is even gonna work. It's also a really good way to figure out which parts of the scene you'll actually be looking at and which parts are important to be focused on. I also dropped the actual music track that I wanted to use for this video and I added it into a sound modifier. Being able to time the animation while hearing the actual beat or the song that you'll be using in the video is such a game changer. I won't be recreating the full animation of the camera, but I highly suggest you that you learn F-curves. F-curves are the main thing that makes animations smooth, that makes animations stand out, and it's the only thing, honestly, you need to know when you're doing animation. When you know F-curves, you can do good animations. Use the camera setup that I showed you with the circle and the camera, learn F-curves, and you'll be able to create amazing camera movements in no time. Once the camera animation was locked in and done and we had this rough block out of the scene, I was ready to move on to actually bringing the car into the scene. I went online to find this set and I found this one-on-one -on -one Lego Porsche model on Maker Bricks. Lucky for me, it was fully textured and all the pieces were already separated. This makes animating them so much easier. I matched the core movement of the car to the yellow cube so the timing would stay consistent. I made some small adjustments to the keyframes to make sure that the car hits the exact marks that I wanted. This is crucial because once you lock this in, it's gonna make the animation of all the individual pieces so much easier later on. Let's move on to the actual animation of the individual pieces. I started with the front wheel because they're front and center of the shot, so they needed the most attention to detail. Again, I used F curves to shape the motion just right, and then I started adding the surrounding pieces one by one, building outwards. I also used this very helpful plugin called Brickalizer for the main assembly, which basically lets you animate pieces from an entire collection simply by controlling a single empty object as the emitter. If you want to know how this works in more detail, make sure to check out the link to the tutorial. I've linked it down below. Step six was adding the rigid body dynamics to the pieces. One of the parts of this video that makes it really stand out are the falling pieces onto the ground because they match perfectly with the shot before. So for this shot, I wanted to have some parts naturally fall into the table. All I had to do was I copied a few of the white pieces into a new collection and then I added a rigid body tag to one of them. After that, I could simply select all of the pieces from that collection and click copy tags from selected to apply it to all the other pieces. This saves a ton of time. Now when you press play, they should all fall onto the table like so. For the second part of the scene where the car hits the table, I created a separate Blender file just to keep things organized and avoid any clutter. I joined all the car pieces together into a body and four single wheels. This is important because the RBC add-on needs a unified mesh to calculate the physics properly. Then I added the RBC add-on. The key settings I tweaked were mainly the throttle and the steering just to get the movement right. Then I baked the physics simulation to lock in the motion. This part is crucial. Without baking in the animation, the car's movement can get messy pretty fast. If you want to know how the RBC add-on works in more detail, make sure to check out this tutorial. I've linked it down below. Next step was the camera parenting. I created a new circle, parented the camera to it, and then parented the circle to the moving car body. That way, the camera follows the car's motion, but I still have full control over the rotation and positioning, like so. Then all I had to do was match the first frame of this scene to the last frame of the first scene to create a seamless transition between the two scenes. I then adjusted the camera's distance and rotation to match the speed and energy of the real life shot. I made sure that the last movement matches perfectly with the speed and direction of the last real clip where I fly through the car window backwards. Again, for this part, I'm not gonna recreate the full camera animation, but I basically used the same technique as in the first one, creating a circle, parenting a camera to it, and mastering F-curves. I really wanna emphasize how important it is for you to learn F-curves. 
I've included the project file so you can look at the camera animation that I've done, but feel free to recreate your own camera animation because that is where the creativity really comes out. Let's go over some final touches. I added a basic office environment that I've built in the past. I dropped in some area lights to match the real life shot and I threw a wood texture onto the table to match the actual desk that I have in my office. I also set up the depth of field for this shot which made it look like a miniature version. I made sure to really lower the f-stop so it becomes really blurry and looks very miniature like and I animated it manually. Then for the final step, I hit render. I think the whole render took around 25 hours in total, which was pretty okay considering that was a very heavy file to render. And that's it, from rough timing blocks to final render. If you want to get the project file for this video and get access to a lot more tutorials like this, make sure to check the link in the description. I see you in the next one.